is Dr. Tio Wan Lin, and welcome to my podcast, Dermatologist Talks Science of Beauty. Today, we're going to chat about one of our must have items in our makeup bag foundation or base makeup. We're also going to talk about some types of foundation popularized by K Beauty, BB Cream, CC Creams, as well as the Cushion Foundation technology. I'm excited to hear more about this. I'm interested in makeup, but I also have sensitive skin, so I've always been wary about applying too much base makeup or foundation that may irritate the skin. I'm sure that many of our listeners have also felt the same way. So, to dive right in, what is the difference between all of these different types of base makeup? The difference between types of base makeup has really got to do with its history as well as the terminology of these products. Foundation is the most basic type of base coverage that we are familiar with for skin tone and coverage for concealing imperfections as well as evening out differences in your skin tone. BB cream was developed to infuse certain skincare benefits into foundations and was made popular by K Beauty. It aims to heal your skin and moisturize. In addition to being able to cover your blemishes, it is infused with sun protection factor, antioxidants for skin healing, and also confers anti aging benefits. CC cream may be considered as a sister product of BB creams and it stands for color correcting. It usually contains additional active ingredients that may help to give an extra glow, including skincare makeup ingredients. Cushions, on the other hand, is a type of patented technology which allows the application of makeup in conjunction with a novel makeup pad that is attached to the compact foundation. It's certainly very convenient and helps to ensure a more natural finish. It allows for application on the go as opposed to traditional foundations which may need to be pumped out and require a separate applicator such as brushes or makeup sponges. But realistically speaking, for personal makeup, I feel that for cushion technology, while it may be acceptable for hygiene purposes, it also increases the risk of bacterial buildup、um, because of the nature of the liquid foundation. And the、um, makeup sponge being stored in a moist environment. Furthermore, the, in the setting of a makeup artist who is involved in professional shoots,、um, using the same cushion, for example, for different models,、um, it, it's probably a little bit less hygienic. And it makes sense to use a, a bottle formula that is pumped out and、um, Using separate applicators for different individuals may also make more sense. Thanks for breaking that down. I've always been slightly confused about what the difference was between BB cream, CC cream, foundation, cushion technology. But moving on, we're used to paying more attention to the ingredients in our skincare. But the ingredients in our makeup matter just as much since they're going to be on our face for long periods of the day. So, what are the ingredients we should look out for in our base makeup? I think in today's world of foundations, base makeup, BB cream, CC creams, it's really common to find skincare ingredients infused in the product. These include antioxidants, moisturizers, for example, sodium hyaluronate, known commonly as hyaluronic acid. These are commonly found in BB and CC creams because it does not add a significant、uh, difference, it doesn't alter the texture of the foundations. It is also cosmetically quite appealing as opposed to the、um, heavier cream moisturizer ingredients. Additionally, we also find a lot of foundation products which are marketed、um, as having SPF protection as well. Now, as to whether this would replace your need for wearing a sunscreen, I feel that really depends on、um, you know, the product and、uh, your brand research. We All may have heard of a Korean brand recently that was called out for actually stating that a product's SPF was higher than what it was when it、um, was tested independently, independently by a website、uh, in a laboratory and not found to have the SPF 50, which it was purportedly marketed to have. So, in terms of brand research and credibility, I think 
It's important for the consumer to be discerning. I personally prefer to play it safe. I would use a product dedicated to sun protection um, and from a brand that works with dermatologists. Um, and then on top of that, the, the base foundation makeup to um, conceal any uh, skin tone irregularities. Ah, I see. So it's better to have sun protection and base makeup as separate steps. Okay, but when it comes to mixing skincare products, can we use different brands of sunscreen and base makeup together? Um, I also think it's important to know that certain brands do not mix well with each other. A lot of sunscreens are fine are not uh, you know, as cosmetically acceptable because it forms either a white cast due to the presence of physical blockers known as uh, titanium or zinc oxide that's present in the formula. This can also cause uh, an effect known as pilling. That's when you find your cream and makeup uh, starts to come off in flakes, which is not pleasant at all. I think that it really depends on which products you are layering together as well. However, the basic thing that you do need is a sun protection product. With the advent of COVID and the pandemic requiring everybody to wear fabric face masks, I uh, actually rely on UPF Factor face masks, which I invented as a concept for textile cosmeceuticals uh, late last year. So in terms of a sun protection textile, a uh, sunblock where um, under a mask actually has additional uh, occlusive effects, especially when um, the formula of most uh, sunscreens is uh, oil-based. Uh, in order for it to be effective, most sunscreens actually require um, an oily base as a vehicle. On the flip side, the wrong ingredients can clog pores or even cause irritation. What are the ingredients we should avoid in our makeup? There are some ingredients that should be avoided in makeup, specifically bismuth oxychloride or BMO for short. This is a common filler ingredient that is used in a lot of base makeup, including what's marketed as mineral makeup for sensitive skin. It's a very cheap filler and it also gives a cosmetically appealing pearlescent finish. However, it can be very irritating for your skin, causing sensitivity and this accounts for why some individuals report having the sensation of cut glass when they use certain cosmetics. That's really good to know. Well, can you give us some tips in general for what we should keep in mind when choosing our foundations? It is important to first identify if there is an underlying dermatological condition. If you are suffering from acne, rosacea, redness, sensitive or eczema type skin and you're trying to use base makeup to cover up these imperfections, then it's a bad idea. Because no matter how well formulated the makeup base is, if your condition is active, applying layers of foundation or makeup can cause skin irritation. Additionally, it's also a form of, uh, I mean, what I would consider a culture media for bacteria to grow on the surface of your skin. So you have to get your skin um, condition diagnosed and treated by an accredited dermatologist um, at this time, at this uh, moment, rather than trying to conceal it. Um, you know, thinking it's just a cosmetic concern because, uh, frankly, these are not cosmetic concerns. There, there is a medical term for it and you do require medications in order for it to be treated properly. However, if you have otherwise healthy skin and you're just looking to conceal uneven skin tone or previous acne scars, then I feel that looking for a brand that works with dermatologists is important to ensure that the product is well tolerated by individuals who have problematic skin. The other thing, of course, is to choose the correct shade. It's really important to note that um, that is probably the most critical factor in terms of how well the foundation goes onto your skin um, because everyone has a unique skin tone. A lot of brands have uh, a limited range of foundation colors and even professional makeup artists tend to mix their own foundations to get the perfect shade. So a brand that offers customized foundation colors can be better than one that's just having a, a fixed shade. 
Um, the Cell Talk CC Cream, which is what we offer in our practice, is perfectly customized to your unique skin tone um, and can be um, you know, matched in a personalized consultation with our color technician. For those with oily skin, a common problem is that they find that their foundation or base makeup is creasing or melting by noon, so leaving them with a messy and sticky look. Well, what are some makeup products that we can use for oily skin? The Zinc Oxide Loose Powder is formulated for individuals with seborrheic skin, and this also includes individuals who have acne. In a tropical climate like Singapore, individuals who suffer from seborrhea will find their condition getting worse because of the um, ambient humidity. The other issue, of course, is that oiliness or the grease on one's face can be cosmetically quite disturbing, especially if the weather is hot and you have makeup on. So the zinc oxide powder is a form of skincare makeup that actually helps to regulate oil production. At the same time, we do know that zinc does treat acne to a certain extent because of its anti-inflammatory properties. So as an adjunct, um, the skincare and makeup uh, component here is very relevant to the treatment of acne and seborrhea. With the no makeup, makeup look becoming a beauty staple and not just a trend, there's been a huge demand for cosmetics that can make your skin look effortlessly flawless yet natural. Well, can you tell us more about skincare makeup? What does it truly entail? Now, it's interesting to note that lots of brands are saying that um, you know they carry skincare makeup, which includes ingredients beneficial for skin. But the key thing here is that the product really has to function as makeup. Um, and not just a primer. So makeup has to conceal imperfections and of course, enhance your complexion. So the issue here is with coverage and we really cannot neglect the fact that even with proper dermatological treatment, a lot of individuals with these underlying skin conditions uh, in the process of them getting better will need concealing. So before calling a product a skincare makeup product, you have to ensure that it meets the needs of your consumers and, and that it really performs the function of color correction, evening out your skin tone and also uh, providing some level of coverage for blemishes. Yeah, it can be so difficult figuring out which shade, finish, or coverage levels are best suited for us. Well, can you give us some tips on how to choose the right shade of foundation? There are two things to consider here. Whether the color actually matches your true skin color and um, also it's important to understand it's, it's not just a shade, but there are different underlying skin tones across the range of human complexions. Some individuals may have pinkish undertones, uh, others a little uh, more towards the yellowish sort of undertone. Um, individuals with warm or cool complexions in theory could have the same shade of the foundation, um, but then there are different undertones which then should be corrected separately. The other consideration of course is um, the formula and with any skincare product and in this case makeup products if you're prone to sensitivity or you have had allergies before then it may be important to do a patch test a simple patch test you can perform is either on your forearm or under your chin leave on the product you're testing overnight if you don't get irritation redness flaking sensitivity or stinging sensation then it's likely safe for you to use well, that's it for this week's episode on Dermatologist Talks Science of Beauty. You can follow Dr. Teo on Instagram at Dr. Teo Wan Lin, where she posts updates on the latest podcast episodes. And remember to subscribe for the latest podcast updates. Oh.